Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is circular permutations with a little detour to group theory at the end where we count um, K cycles in the symmetric group. So let's start with a motivating problem. Let's say you have a round table, a circular table, and you've got seven people at your home as guests. What you want to do is you want to seat four of them at the table. Now, three of them you're gonna ignore. You're gonna pick four of them and you're gonna seat them at the table. Um, and you want to know how many different ways can you do that? I've got to tell you something about this seating arrangement of, around the table. Um, in this arrangement, the actual seat doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who sits in this seat. The seats are all identical. What matters is the relative position of the guests to each other. So what matters is that who's sitting to the left of who. So what I care about is that who's sitting on this side and on that side and across from me, not which seat I'm sitting in. So what we want, and these things are called circular permutations. And what we want to do is we want to count them. And, um, and then at the end, again, there will be a little connection to group theory, um, which is the same, which is uh, counting the number of K cycles in the symmetric group SN. If you don't know anything about group theory, that's fine. Most of this lecture is combinatorics. Um, if, um, and, and you might be interested in, in hearing a little bit about group theory at the end. It, it's not too deep. So um, let's start with uh, circular permutations. Um, um, and, and so let's start with a positive integer N. A circular permutation of one through N, bracket N is our a prototype set with N elements, one through N. And, um, and a circular permutation of that just means order the elements of, uh, of bracket N around the circle. So um, the key thing is that there's no first element in a circular permutation. In, in an actual linear permutation, a, a non-circular permutation, really matters which one goes first what elements is you're putting in, in, in your permutation you're starting with. But in a circular permutation, because you're going around the circle and around the circle, there's no first. Everyone is just following uh, the next guy around. So for example, one, three, four, five, two, and four, five, two, one, three are different permutations of what permutations, not circular, of one through five. One starts with one, the other one starts with four. But if you write these around the circle, you notice that they're actually, everyone is following the same one. So for example, if you go, um, clockwise, uh, this first one, if you start with one, is one, three, four, five, two. This one is four, five, two, one, three. So this is that second one. But if you start reading it from one, it's again one, three, four, five, two, one, three, four, five, two. There are, if, if they just keep walking a little bit um, around the circle, they will be exactly the same as, as each other. So, um, um, so and, and we might want to have different notation. And in fact, in group theory, one uses the cycle notation. Uh, this notation, instead of writing one, three, four, five, two, when you put them in parentheses like that, uh, you, what you mean is that uh, one is followed by three, by four, by four, five, by two, but then two is followed by one. So, so this is sort of a cycle. I mean, it's exactly a cycle. One, three, four, five, two. And in that notation, in that parlance, these two things are the same. Um, in combinatorics, I'm not going to use this notation that much. In my group theory course, I will use it all the time. But in this, uh, I will not use it that often. But whenever we want to emphasize that we're talking about a circle permutation, we might. Um, but, but if you're not using this notation and you write one, three, four, five, two, you've got to be extremely clear. Are you talking about a linear permutation, a permutation where um, you, know, you have a start and an end or a circular one? Um, now, as an example, let's look at circular permutations of one, two, three. How many of them are there? Now note that actual permutations of one, two, three, there are three factorial, six of them. There is uh, th three places for the first, um, uh, three choices for the first element, two choices for the second one, and one choice for the last one, six of them. How many, uh, how, but how many circular permutations we have? Now, again, since there's no beginning in a circular permutation, you might as well always start with one. In fact, in, the, in that previous example, if you start with one, you see that these two things are the same. So if you start with one, then there's only two choices. You either have one, two, three, or one, three, two. And those are the only circular permutations. So there's two circular permutations for um, bracket three, whereas there are six permutations for bracket three. Okay, now we wanna be interested in um, circular R permutations. And so before that, I'm gonna review what R permutations, not circular ones, are. This was the subject of a previous video that I urge you to watch if 
if this is going a little bit too fast, um, but, but I will quickly remind you what R permutations are. So again, bracket N is one true N, and R is an integer, a positive integer less than or equal to N. Then an R permutation of uh, bracket N is just an ordered list of R of the N elements. So you pick R of the N elements and you put them in order, and then you've got yourself an R permutation. And we have a theorem that tells us how many of these things are. And that theorem is actually not that hard. This was the subject of a previous video, but I can give you the proof right, right away as soon as I write it down. So the number of R permutations of bracket N is a falling factorial, N lower R or N down R. And what that is, is a truncated factorial. You start with N multiplied by N minus one by N minus two, and you have R terms. You end at N minus R minus one which is n minus r plus one. Um, and and that, that gives you um, exactly r terms. And an easier way to write this thing is to write it as n factorial, complete the top, multiply by the extra terms you need to get to, to one, but then divide by the extra stuff you got so that you have the same thing you started out with. And, and the extra stuff is n minus r factorial. Now, why is this the number of r permutations? Because when you want to construct an r permutation, you have r spots. For the first spot, you have n choices. You can pick any element, one through n, to put in that first spot. For the second spot, you can't pick the guy you just pick. So you've got n minus one choices left. For the third spot, you've already picked two things. So you've got to pick, you have n minus two ch choices, and so on. And so you will have r terms like that because you have r spots, and, and those were your choices. And so this is what you get for the number of r permutations. So now let's define what an r circular permutation is and then count them. So as you might expect, R is again a positive integer less than or equal to N. Um, and a circular R permutation of bracket N as opposed to an R permutation of N is a circular permutation of R of the elements of bracket N. So you pick R elements and put them around that round table. Um, and, and the number of different ways you can do that uh, is what we want to count. So, so this next theorem is going to tell us how many uh, circular permutations there are. So R again is greater than zero, less than or equal to N, both are integers. The number of R circular R permutation of bracket N is, you should actually stop the video, try to sort of answer that yourself. I will actually prove the theorem before I tell you what it is, because um, the argument will just tell us what the answer is. So let's get started with the argument. So I'll start with, as I said, you should try to do this yourself. I start with R permutations of bracket N. Um, in other words, not circular ones. And, and we just talked about that. That's just a falling factorial, n lower r. That's the number of r permutations. And each one of these permutations, you can get, make a circular permutation out of it, just connect it to each, itself um, and call it a circular permutation. The problem is that quite a few R permutations will give you the same circular R, R, R permutation. Um, um, so, and, and, and in fact, R of them will give you the same one because you can take the same R permutation and, and just sort of start it at a different place. Take the last element and put it at the beginning. Then take the, the one that now is last and put it at the beginning. Each one of those will be a different permutation, but they all will give you the same circular permuta permutation. So each R R permutation gives you just one circular R permutation. So there's a major double counting going on, or R couple the, the counting going on in here. So the number of circular R, per, 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 R permutations is going to be um, the number of uh, R permutations divided by R because every R, all, all R of them give you just one. So, so, so the number is going to be a falling factorial divided by R. And so here's the answer. It's going to be n factorial over r times n minus r factorial. Now, in the particular case where r is n, like when we are taking n elements and we're just writing down um, them in a, in, in, in a circle, so we're looking at circular permutations as opposed to circular r permutations. Circular n permutations of bracket n are just called circular permutations, just like um, n permutations of bracket n are called permutations. So what happens then? Then R is N. And if instead of R you put N, then first of all, this N minus R factorial, because, because N minus becomes N minus N, which is zero factorial, becomes one. 
and then this R is N, and that cancels that N out, and you're left with N minus one factorial. And so the number of circular permutations of bracket N is just N minus one factorial. Okay, so now let's look at an example. Let's say that you have um, two, or that you have two families over for dinner. Each of these families have four members. Okay, and you want to seat them and yourself. You have a round table. This is the theme here. We have a round table, and we want to seat. Um, all those eight people and yourself at this table. So you've got nine people to sit at the table. You just have one rule. Your rule is that no two people from the same family should be next to each other. You can sit anywhere you like, but no two of those guys from the same family, you want them to be next to each other. And, and so the question is that, what's the number of possibilities? How many ways can you do that? This is a counting problem, a combinatorics a good bit of it is about counting. Um, this, in, this is called enumerative combinatorics, and we're just starting uh, to do problems such as this. The, the wonderful thing about combinatorics is that even if you don't, haven't seen any of it, you can always understand the problems. There's, not, there's very little jargon in the, in the way we say the problems. Sometimes there is, but often there is not. So for example, this problem is a problem that you can you be able to understand. And therefore you should stop the video um, and try to answer the question yourself before following my um, reasoning for, for, for this problem. Okay, so how am I gonna do it? The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say, first sit yourself and one of the families. So one of the families was four and you were one, just take those five people and sit them around the table. Well, that's a circular permutation of five things. It's a five circular permutation of five things. So, it's a, uh, so, so the number of ways you can do that is four factorial. So there's four factorial ways of sitting you and one of the families around the table. Now, A1, A2, A3, A4 are stand-ins for who is sitting to your right, who is sitting to the right of them, and the right of them, and so forth. So if you pick one of those possibilities, this is um, what it will look like. Now, what are you going to do is you're going to place the other family, the other four people, um, among these. Now, you don't want any two of them to be this, uh, next to each other. You also don't want any two of the A's to be next to each other. So what you want to make sure is that the A's are separated out. So you need to put someone and only one of the other family between A1 and A2. And how many choices do you have there? Um, um, you, you have four choices. You can have put one of those four people there. Then you need to put someone between A2 and A3, and, and you've got three choices there someone between A3 and A4, and you've got two choices there. Okay, now you've seen that three of the uh, people from the second family, you've got that last one uh, left, left out. You can't put it, where can you put them? Well, they, they, they have to sit either between U and A1 or U and A4, but it doesn't really matter which one. So for that last person, you also have two choices. The person can sit either side of you. So what's the total number of choices? Well, there was that four factorial possibility at the beginning, then there, you have to multiply that by four times three times two. That's another four factorial. And then times this last two, which was this last person, which had the choice of sitting either side of you. And so the final answer is two times four factorial squared. In all counting combinatorial problems, there's usually millions of ways of doing it right. Actually, there's a lot more ways of doing it wrong. But, but, but doing it right, you can do it this different way. So I, I urge you to try to argue this differently. And, and there's many, many different ways of doing that. But the answer is two times four factorial square. Finally, let me give you a quick connection uh, to the symmetric group and to the group to group theory. So SN is called the symmetric group of degree N. And all that is, is the set of one to one onto mat maps bijections from uh, one true N to one true N. Um, I have videos on, on group theory where this is discussed in detail. I have videos on one-to-one onto -one -on maps that, they, that if you do, are not familiar with those, you, you, you should. That, that's a sort of a fundamental idea that you should, you should know about. Um, so, um, so the set of all one-to-one onto -one -on maps, one-to-one onto -one -on is another name for bijection, from um, bracket n to bracket n, it's set with n elements to itself, is called the symmetric group. And this is the same as, 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 uh, as we have discussed uh, before the same as the set of permutations of n. When you have one-to-one -one onto maps from n to, to n, you are saying where every, every element is going. And so you're giving me another permutation of n. So Sn has n factorial elements. Okay, now 
the permutation, like, like there's many permutations in the SN. Like here's one permutation, the one that one goes to four, four goes to seven, seven goes to three, three goes to five, five goes to one. So this is a one-to-one -one onto map um, from, um, um, from um, one through seven to one through seven. Actually, where does two go to and where does six go? They're fixed. Two goes to two, six goes to six. I didn't draw those because those are fixed. So this is a permutation, re realizing that if a couple of the elements are, are, are fixed, um, and, and it's called a five cycle in S7. It's clear why it's called a five cycle. It's a cycle with five things in it. And again, there are two fixed elements. So we have a one-to-one onto map from um, one through seven to one through seven. Um, one goes to four, four goes to seven, seven goes to three, three goes to five, five goes to one, two goes to two, six goes to six. And such a thing is called a five cycle. And, uh, and, and, and in group theory, we use the cycle notation. And we write that as one goes to four to seven to three to five, five goes back to one. And this is called a five cycle. And uh, the number of K cycles is SN. So how many, so, so N is some uh, positive integer, K is something less than or equal to N, again, a positive integer. How many K cycles does SN have? How many four cycles does S7 have, for example? The, the, that's the same as saying how many circular K permutations of bracket N it is. Because if you want a K cycle of SN, you've got to pick K elements from one to N and put them around the table. That's exactly what circular K permutations are. So the number of K cycles of SN is the same as the number of circular K permutations of bracket N. And we know what that is. That's a um, um, falling factorial N lower K divided by K. And it's, it's N factorial uh, over K times N minus K factorial. That's what we have been discussing. So in particular, the number of five cycles in S7 is uh, seven factorial over five times two factorial, five times two is 10, and it gets 504. So there's 504 different five cycles like this one in S7. Each time you get to pick five elements and put them around the circle. This is the end of this lecture. I will see you in the other lectures. There are lectures on group theory if you're interested in those. There are plenty of lectures on, on, on linear algebra, and there are some lectures on, on basic topics in undergraduate mathematics, like one-to-one -one onto maps and bijections and cardinality and induction and so forth. I urge you to watch them if you're interested.